Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Today I'm going to show you something seriously amazing in Power BI around DAX formulas. Just how, just really how advanced you can get with DAX formulas. And I, as soon as I realized, wow, this is what I could achieve, the opportunities just become exponential in terms of the um, really intensive analysis that you can do on your data. Just analysis that just wasn't possible before. And so, and, and maybe had been um, only utilized by those who are practicing machine learning or R, but you can actually do a lot of this insight and visualize it in a really effective way just using DAX. Um, so I'm going to show you some pretty advanced logic in this one, um, but I'm going to walk you through it so we can actually work out exactly what's going on. And I'm going to show you the reasons why I think it's, it's just a good way to visualize things. Um, it might not, you might in your own situation not have exactly the same scenario, it might be a very different scenario in a different industry, but you can utilize the same techniques. So that's what I want to go through today. So in regards to outlier detection, I guess if we were to detect an outlier, the main thing that we need to work out is the logic behind what makes up the outlier, right? And so I just want to showcase um, how if we get that logic right, how visually it can impact our reports and how much uh, easier and effective it is for a consumer to figure out what you're trying to show them. And so if we look at these two charts here, the first one, they're showing exactly the same thing, except I've created a legend or a, a slicer a filter in the right hand side chart which shows me what my outliers are. And so I've created an outlier to say, well, if a customer in this case, so we're looking at um, a whole bunch of customers, uh, if a customer's sales and their profit margins at the same time are above a certain level, then I'm saying that that is an outlier in my data set and I want to see who those customers are. And so you can visually see that here much better than just looking at all your customers uh, and, all, you know, and all their profit margins and all their sales. And so by doing that, you can also really drill into your customers a lot better. So for instance, we've got the same visualization here and say I want to actually drill into either my non-outliers or my outliers, I can actually select a filter, which enables me to do so. Or I can actually then create a chart and put a filter uh, in the filter fields section um, inside um, Power BI Desktop. And that's what I'm doing here. And this enables me to really drill into the to these um, uh, to these customers who I deem outliers. So how do I do it? How do I do it? That's the, and how is it done? And how, how could you apply it in your own models? So the first thing to note is that we need to do this in a dynamic way. We need to, because essentially what we're doing is we're segmenting, we're creating groups of people, of, of our customers here, right? One we're deeming an outlier, one we're deeming a non-outlier. So how do we actually work that logic into our models in a dynamic way? So, to do anything dynamic, you, you basically have to do it inside of DAX formula. You can't physically create a calculated column in your models and, uh, and, and, and hope that if you were to put some different date time frame or regional time frame, uh, for example, in this model, that you're going to get the results that you want. Because if you put uh, calculated columns up here, then you're going to get sta that static information. It is only going to update on refresh. So what we need to do is we need to do this in a dynamic way. Now. The first way to do um, logic in a dynamic way is you need a supporting table. So you'll see here that I've created this outlier detection logic. This is, an, this is actually a table in my data model. It's not connected to anything. It's just in my data model. So let's go and have a look at the table. And so this is where, you know how at the start I said, well, we've got to work out the logic for what is an outlier. Well, this is where you input your logic for what, a, what an outlier or for whatever group you want to create um, is. So in this case, my outlier, I'm saying, well, my outlier is going to have profit margins, a minimum profit margin of 35%. These are actually percents if I, if I just change these over. And a maximum... Um, margin of, of in this case, just 100% because that's just, you know, it's not, not going to happen. Um, and also on the non-outlier side, it's going to say um, from zero up to 35. So my max is actually 35. And then the same for um, for sales, right? So I've created a um, some logic here that's saying, okay, well, if my outlier is, my outlier is above 55,000, if they do above 55,000 and above 35% profit margin, then I deem that to be an outlier. So think about how you could apply this in your in your own logic. You might have three different parameters or variables 
that is going to uh, detect the outlier. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to work with two. And I'm going to show you how we can create formulas which iterate through this table and, and evaluate is a particular customer, do they um, do they match out to these, um, you know, to this logic, to the outlier logic or the non-outlier logic. Okay, so if I jump back to the canvas area, now we need to go through a few steps here, and I'm going to walk you through all the formulas. I'm not going to write them out because um, because it will just take a little bit too long um, for how how the length of this video that I want to create. But I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to walk you through it. Now, what we need to do is we need to now work out or, or run through that logic. Okay, that's that's a, that's the main thing we need to we need to say for each individual customer. Do they evaluate as an outlier or a non-outlier? So just keep that in the back of your mind as we work through it. Now. I'm going to write that initial formula to begin with, right? I'm going to say I want to calculate up my total sales for each individual customer, and that's what filter and values uh, this values function does. It allows us to iterate through every single customer here, and then go through that logic. And I'm going to say for each individual customer, is the total sales greater than or equal to the min in the outlier detection logic table for sales? And is the profit margin greater than or equal to the min in the outlier detection logic profit margins? So this is the 55,000 and this is the 35%. And if that evaluates to, if these evaluate to true, then that's going to count, count total sales for that particular customer, right? If, if, if uh, anything, any of these two uh, variables or these two results do not evaluate to true, then it's not going to count up total sales. That's essentially what this is showcasing. And then check this out. Then I'm going to jump to non-outlier sales and I'm going to run through some logic here. I'm going to say for each individual customer is total sales less than the max of the um, total sales uh, outlier detection logic sales and is profit margins or uh, less than the profit margins max as well. Now the main difference is this double line here. This is all logic, right? We can't do and, we can't do and here. We have to use or because if you think about it, if we did and then all it would showcase is these, uh, is the results which are both under 55,000 and under 35%, but we want to do an or here because or we, we also want to return values which might be one but not the other. Okay, so a little bit there, and I've had to explain it all, but but certainly try and understand what is going on here because this is where the hard, this is where the, the hardcore logic occurs. So now that I've got that, that's not the end of it. That's not the end of it because what we need to do is we need to somehow create one formula which we can put inside this visualization. And that's what this, if we look down into the y-axis here, that's what the sales grouping formula does. And so if I jump to what that formula is, it's saying, well, if selected value is outlier, then I want to return the outlier sales. And if not, I want to return my non-outlier sales. So that then allows us to integrate or, res or retrieve the different results or the different formulas for whatever selection or whatever filter is applied. So in this case, you know, this customer is filtered by this non-outlier, so it is going to return, it is going to go and retrieve this formula for us here. And the opposite is true for the outlier side. So that is really it. And then and then all I had to do, all I had to do if I jump back over to my visualizations here, is sub out total sales and sub in my sales grouping, this master uh, measure that enables me to showcase those outliers. There is a bit there. No, I'm not denying it, not denying it. But <laughs> this shows you how amazing DAX is, right? I mean, hopefully you've got to this point in the video and you're just going, wow. I mean, you can run some pretty advanced logic and you showcase it in a really effective way. I mean, there's so many applications for outlier detection. It's, it's, um, you know, it's unreal. I mean, think of any industry, any situation you're being in. If you want to really drill into or showcase a very specific insight, especially when you're doing some comparison with a scatter chart, then this is a perfect way to add value or to, to, to add more insight into your visualizations. You want to be, you know, this, this isn't going to do it. This is not going to showcase, you know, the insights that you want. This type of insight 
is 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 far more compelling. It's going to be far more um, you know effective for a, for a consumer to view and to and to take action on, and that's ultimately what you want. Okay, so hopefully you liked you like this video. I mean, this is this is really diving into some advanced decks. Um, don't get me wrong, this is not this is not simple stuff. Um, but I love showcasing this stuff because this is obviously what excites me and what I what I like um, showcasing and, and and building examples and demos on. Good luck implementing this technique. I wish you all the best with it. Cheers. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.